Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Mechie's case study videos. Hope you guys enjoyed last week's. This week we have a great case centering around a sore throat. Yeah, right? yep, we do, we do. So why don't we just dive into it? Why don't you tell us a little something about this patient? Yeah, so I saw this patient, you know, about two weeks ago in my uh, internal medicine office. Um, this is an 18 year old female, no past medical history, presented the office with a sore throat for about two days. She also had um, associated fevers, chills, and difficulty swallowing for about one day. Um, and she also complained about an episode of nausea and vomiting um, on the day of the exam. She says she's been employed as a uh, a caretaker, a preschool caretaker, oh. um, and so she's telling me that you know there are a couple of children who were sick about two weeks ago, um, and she thinks she may have contracted from them. She doesn't know what it is, but she said a couple yeah, of kids were one. sick. Yeah, exactly. So she took Tylenol um, three times within the last two days and said basically no improvement in symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. Um, she denies any, you know, visual disturbances, any headaches, any earache, um, no rhinorrhea, no cough, um, no shortness of breath, no chest pain, no abdominal pain, no bowel or bladder changes whatsoever. So, what are you thinking? So, to do a real, a short, quick recap, um, she's 18, sore throat, mm -hmm. fevers, chills, difficulty mm -hmm. swallowing, nausea, vomiting. You got it. Right. Um, throughout all of this, what was her team actually ever took a temperature on her? She did not, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's always subjective fevers. Yeah. And so with the sore throat, one of the first things, one of the most common things you want to think about is a varopharyngitis yep. versus a strep yep. infection, right? Bacterial strep. Yep. Yeah. Um, she's 18. Mm -hmm. She has interactions with small little germ balls yes. <laughs> every day. Yep. Everywhere. Yeah. And they've recently been sick. Yeah, exactly. So high up on my differential is a strep throat versus a viral pharyngitis. Yep. I would also put along with her symptoms and her age of mono in there. Yeah. Tonsillitis. Tonsillitis. Almost yeah. slipped the top of my head. Yeah. She's a little old for it. Yeah. But it could be. Um, diphtheria making its little comeback. This is true in the in the world of anti vax vaxxers. <laughs> diphtheria could be could yeah. be making a little comeback. Oh, so sad. Um, yeah. Uh, young, maybe questionably sexually active. I'm not sure about her patients. You also want to consider STDs. Yeah, gonorrhea, STDs, chlamydia. Yep, absolutely. Could be absolutely. infecting her. Um, but tell me more. Um, yeah, so I, th I think that's a good differential, you know, like we talked about in the first uh, video, what it is, what it can be, and what don't you want to miss. Um, so on the exam, she appears a little lethargic. Um, you know, I started my heat exam at that point, so her head was atraumatic, um, eyes were normal, sclera was white, um, pupils are round and equal, um, nose is normal, um, and on the ear exam, uh, you know, no tenderness palpation to the pinna or the external ear at all. Mm -hmm. um, upon examining the inner ear, uh, it was clear, uh, no, you know, erythema. no erythema through the canal, and the, there was the tympanic membrane wasn't bulging. So benign ear then. Yeah, and on the third exam, uh, it was erythematous everywhere, everywhere. Uh, and, and beefy, beefy yeah, red and the and the tonsils. Well, I'd say were probably plus one or plus two swollen, hmm. with white exudates on them, and a lot of them too. So I mean, at this point, well, let me finish. Let me finish my uh, physical yeah. exam. Uh, I couldn't feel any lymph nodes. Chest was normal. Lungs were normal. I couldn't hear any um, you know accessory sounds, and um, the abdomen was normal also. So if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, talks like a duck. Yeah. What are you thinking? I'm still thinking it could be strep throat. Yeah. Now, I know there is the center criteria. Mm -hmm. Right, so strep can be a clinical diagnosis, mm -hmm. right? It's, what is it, absence of cough, you get one point. History of a fever, you get one point. Yep. 
If I don't you, think it's a history of fever. It's a documented fever. Oh, a documented yeah. fever. So she yeah. just had subjective fevers. Yeah. So on, on her vitals, I should have mentioned this early. That was my fault. On her vitals, um, she was a little tachycardic and her f- temperature was 101.9. Mm. So I mean, she has that fever. Yeah. So already we racked in two points. Yeah. Um, anterior cervical lymph nodes. No lymph nodes palpated. Okay. Um, tonsil or exudates. Yes. That's another one. So, yep. that's so three, three points, points altogether. Yeah. Okay, and then the next one is age, right? That's that little bracket. Right. So if you're somewhere between three and fourteen, mm-hmm. you get a point. Somewhere between fifteen and forty-four, you're nulled, mm-hmm. no yeah, points. Exactly. And if you're forty-five and above, you actually subtract a point. Right. Right. Yep. So her cumulative score ended up being three. Three altogether. Okay, and. I know everybody knows what the central criteria is, and they think it's either like a positive or negative type test. A higher result gives you a higher chance of. I mean, it certainly is, right? Yeah. Um, but there's actually a score gradient. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So if it's if she's if any patient scores a zero or below. Zero or below. Zero. <laughs> zero. No, or below. Oh, negative one. That's yeah. true. Yeah, this is true. My fault. Integers. Do you yes. remember this? Yes. <laughs> okay, zero or below. <laughs> you have a very low risk of having. Yes. Group, group A beta. Beta. extra. Correct. And so one to two point five chance, and it just increases as you go. Correct. Correct. But with a four. It's not a hundred percent chance of you having. Group A beta, beta hemolytic strep. So what is it? Somewhere in like the high seventies. It's fifty-one to fifty-five percent, which is kind of shocking, right? Like I thought every, all the time during school and still like in the early years. I mean, this is my first year, but you know, in the early months. Yeah, early months. But I, you know, I thought it was like you know eighty to ninety percent chance of, of having group A beta hemolytic, hemolytic strep, but um, it's only fifty-one to fifty-five percent, even hmm. if you have four points. So where do you go from this, right? She scores at a three. That's somewhere between high 20s, low 30s. Mm -hmm. Where do you go from there? So for her, we started off with a rapid strep. Um, It's easy. It's in office and it's cheap. Um, So we did it and it was negative. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, are you treating or culturing? So it's interesting because the r- rapid strep test we have is the latex agglutinin, which mm-hmm. is an old one, um, and most offices have it just because it's cheap. Yeah. Um, but that has a sensitivity of seventy percent. The new newer, newer ones that are coming out have sensitivity about 96 percent. Okay, I see. So depending on what actual method and technology strep, yeah, you're using yeah, exactly it'll help also it dictate depends. your care okay mm-hmm. yeah um and you know later i looked this up but tons having tonsillar exudates itself gives you an 85 percent specificity of having group a beta hemolytic strep and moreover if you've had strep exposure in the last two weeks it's 91% specificity. So our patient, she's def- she definitely has the exudates. Right. And we can almost safely assume she's had strep exposure mm-hmm. with the children. Although we don't know for sure. We whether, don't know for sure. Exactly. Whether yeah. it was strep or chicken pog. Um, so yeah, based on this, we did the culture. I mean, and going back to actually rapid strep, it's, it's a little controversial at this point because, you know, some studies, so for example, AAPA, or AAP, um, American Academy of uh, Pediatricians, mm. um, recommend that you should do a culture following a rapid, negative rapid strep. Um, and the reason they say is just because, you know, GAB HS can spread and the complications, although they're rare, separative or non separative, yeah. um, are severe. So just to be on the safe side, you should do it. And also, strep is one of those where. It has a ping pong effect where although it lasts anywhere between three to four days up to two weeks is you know you could be feeling better but I would then get it and then it would go on to housemate number three and could be infected back yeah yeah 
right? That's true. Um, and, and, you know, some other studies show that that culture is not necessary unless you have a clinical suspicion mm-hmm. of um, strep throat. And, and given that there's a massive drop in prevalence of rheumatic fever, a post-strep glomerulonephritis, they're basically saying that it's unnecessary to get a culture after a rapid negative after rapid, a negative strep. rapid strep. Yeah. But if only if you have a mild clinical suspicion. Right. If you're thinking it looks like a duck walks like a duck sounds like strep. Yeah. You're gonna do the culture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So you know, with this patient, given that she had tonsillar exudates, fevers. Sore throat, difficulty swallowing, um, and absence of cough. So we're basically like, you know, we definitely think this is strep. It's mm-hmm. still on the top of our list, given that the rapid strep is still negative. So with all the evidence that we gathered, we decide to do the culture. Um, and the culture comes back positive for group A beta hemolytic strep. Goes to show you. Yeah, so... You know, I called the patient back, sent her antibiotics, gave her amoxicillin, and had her come back actually in a week to do another culture to make sure it's been eradicated. It's been eradicated properly. She came back, did another culture, and lo and behold, it's gone. So, yeah, for her. Yeah, I mean, it was a good case because, you know, one, we see strep throat in office, in all urgent time. care, in emergency rooms, all the time. Mm-hmm. And especially flu season's coming up, the fall is coming up. Kids are going back to school. Uh, you know, this is something that's going to be prevalent uh, in the next few months. Um, and everyone's going to see a lot of this. Yeah. So, you know, whether to do a rapid strep, whether to do a culture, I think that's always been controversial. Um, yeah, It's good. Yeah, I, I think the bottom line, it's your clinical suspicion Mm -hmm. of what you think it is Uh, but if you're ever in doubt just do a culture yeah right it's not gonna hurt well it is gonna hurt well (laughs) but there's there's not a high risk profile with it yeah 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 absolutely all right well guys i hope you enjoyed this case it was nice sweet and short um we'll see you next week right let us know your idea of a culture versus a rapid strep versus yeah. just empiric treatment is. Where do you stand in this controversy? Mm-hmm. Right, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye. Bye.